This fiasco that took place last week at Arlington Cemetery that was organized by Donald Trump and his presidential campaign is becoming a story that won't go away, even though Trump and his campaign, I'm sure, would really, really love for it to go away. And that is as good a reason as any for us to not let it go away. If, if Donald Trump wants people to forget about it, then we absolutely cannot let people forget about it. It seemed like it was going to go away a day or so after it took place when the army released a statement saying that the staffer at Arlington who was the subject of the uh, the assault, the accosting, whatever it was from the Trump campaign, uh, had decided not to pursue charges in the matter and that the army therefore considered it case closed. But you know who may not be considering it case closed? The United States Congress. And you know who else might not be considering it case closed, especially depending on what the United States Congress discovers if it pursues an investigation and holds hearings about it? Um, the Department of Justice. Because here's the thing. What Donald Trump and his campaign did at Arlington National Cemetery last week was not only in poor taste, was not only tacky and tactless, and was not only in violation of the cemetery's rules and regulations, which is not in dispute, it may also have been in violation of federal law. Interestingly, Trump's own story about what happened that day at Arlington and why whatever it was that happened was okay and he shouldn't be blamed for anything has changed a little bit over the last week. A few days after the incident at Arlington, Trump posted on his vanity Twitter clone social media website, Truth Social, quote, I want to thank the families of our great warriors who have been lost to us for the way they came together as one and thanked me for attending at their request the celebration of their wonderful family members who, because of the incompetence of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, are no longer with us. Thank you for saying you wanted me to stand with you at Arlington National Cemetery and take pictures. That it was your request, not mine, but it was my great honor to do so. And then he goes on a little bit longer and says some more, but you get the idea there. Boy, what a classy guy Donald Trump is, huh? Just nothing but class from head to toe is that Donald Trump throwing the Gold Star families under the bus. Now, Granted, my sympathy for these Gold Star families is somewhat less than my average level of sympathy for Gold Star families because they appear to be in on this whole thing and they did invite Trump to be a part of this stunt at the graves of their loved ones at Arlington. But still, you know, they're Gold Star families. They're, they lost loved ones in combat. They do deserve at least a certain amount of sympathy for that, even if they personally are kind of scumbags. But to throw them under the bus for Trump to say, I just want to thank, and to do it in the guise of like honoring them, but really you're just honoring yourself and excusing yourself from any responsibility and trying to distance yourself from them. I want to thank those Gold Star families for inviting me, even though it wasn't my idea, and insisting that we take pictures, even though that wasn't my idea either. But it was all because of them, and they requested it, and I was just doing what the Gold Star families wanted me to. So if anybody has a problem with anything that happened, you should take it up with them, because it wasn't my idea. I was just doing what they wanted me to. Like, what a piece of shit. Like, the... The thing that he did at Arlington makes him a piece of shit for a start. Like just doing a political stunt at Arlington National Cemetery for a start automatically qualifies you as a piece of shit. But then you throw extra shit on the pile of shit that is yourself, if that makes sense. By not only doing that, but then when controversy erupts because you did it, you say, oh, it was the grieving family's idea. Oh, the, the, the surviving family of the soldiers whose graves we were at. It was their idea. It wasn't me. It was them. But, as I said, Trump's story has changed a little bit. In that quasi-tweet, <laughs> that faux tweet that I just read, he's basically saying, hey, I, whatever happened, it's not my fault because I was there at the request of the family. But then, a couple of days later... He posts this 
on Truth Social. There was no conflict or fighting at Arlington National Cemetery last week. It was a made-up story by Comrade Kamala and her misinformation squad. She made it all up to make up for the fact that she and Sleepy Joe have blood on their hands for the incompetent Afghanistan withdrawal, the most embarrassing day in U.S. history. They should have been at Arlington, not on a beach or studying for a debate. Thanks to you, my friends, the great Gold's Star families, for revealing the truth of a beautiful day of honor. Could not have been a nicer moment. And there were no fights or problems, only in the heads of those that are destroying our country. The thing is, it was people on Trump's campaign who talked about the fact that there was an incident at Arlington that day. Stephen Chung talked about it publicly long before Kamala Harris said anything about it. Trump's own people who were there with him that day were talking about the fact that there had been an incident of some kind. If there was no incident, if there was no conflict, as Trump is now claiming, then why did Stephen Chung say that the Arlington staffer who attempted to block the photographer and enforce the rules was having a mental health episode? If nothing happened, why did he say that? Because he's that big of an asshole? I'll believe that. Like, if that's your story... If Trump has shifted from throwing the Gold Star families under the bus to throwing Stephen Chung under the bus, okay, I'll go along with that. But is that really what he's saying? That his own people who reference there having been an event of some kind, an incident of some kind between the Trump campaign and Arlington Cemetery staff, that they were just making it up? I don't think that's the intended argument. I don't think Trump really even understands the ramifications of the argument he is making. He's just making an argument that sounds good to him right now that he hopes will distract people and get them to forget about things that other people have said in the very recent past, and it'll just enable everybody to move on. No, never mind. There was no incident. Forget it. We're not placing blame on anybody except Kamala Harris, for some reason, who didn't attend the event at Arlington that was a private event that was organized by those families who invited Trump, not Kamala Harris, but whatever. Let's act like it was some kind of public commemoration that Vice President Harris and President Biden just blew off because they're dicks and they hate the military. You know how Joe Biden hates the military, right? And has never shown any deference at all to the military, right? It sounds a lot like Joe Biden. So I don't think Trump even really understands the implications of the argument he's making, but here's the important part for you and me. It doesn't matter. And whether or not the Gold Star families that were involved in this fiasco invited Trump, and whether or not taking pictures in Section 60, which is prohibited, was their idea or not, doesn't matter. Because let's just say that the families did want to take pictures with Trump. I'll believe that. Now they're saying that's what happened, and that's what Trump is saying. Okay, so they wanted to take pictures with Donald Trump at the graves of their loved ones who were buried at Arlington. Okay, you're not allowed to do that. A Gold Star family deciding to break the rule doesn't mean that they are allowed to break the rule. It doesn't, doesn't mean that the rule is rescinded in this circumstance. They still broke the rules. Donald Trump and his campaign still broke the rules. If you get caught robbing a bank and then you say to the cops, it's okay, one of the tellers told me to take the money, you still robbed a bank, dude. You still broke the law. And breaking the law may in fact have been what Donald Trump and his campaign did. Not merely breaking regulations at Arlington, but breaking federal law. This is from a Washington Post article by Aaron Blake from August 28th. Headline, Did Trump's Campaign Break the Law at Arlington National Cemetery? And Blake reports that the statement Arlington National Cemetery released on the Trump incident reads in part, quote, Federal law prohibits political campaign or election-related activities within Army National Military Cemeteries to include photographers, content creators, or any other persons attending for purposes or in direct support of a partisan political candidate's campaign. Arlington National Cemetery reinforced and widely shared this law 
and its prohibitions with all participants. That makes it sound like not only did Trump and his campaign violate the law, but the Gold Star families who participated in this, and if Trump is to be believed, invited him and came up with this whole idea all by themselves to begin with, also violated federal law. What federal law specifically was violated? Here's Aaron Blake again. The apparently applicable law here is 32 CFR subsection 553.32. That law says the executive director of the Army National Military Cemeteries shall, quote, ensure the sanctity of public and private memorial and ceremonial events. All memorial services and ceremonies within Army National Military Cemeteries, other than official ceremonies, shall be purely memorial in purpose. It adds, memorial services and ceremonies at Army National Military Cemeteries will not include partisan political activities. And then the article goes on to describe how the things that Trump did at Arlington that day and the way his campaign has used Trump's presence at Arlington that day, as well as photographs and video that were taken of Trump at Arlington that day for purposes that could not be interpreted as anything other than partisan political activities. And as for the significance or lack thereof of Trump receiving an invitation from Gold Star families whose loved ones are interred at Arlington, Blake spoke with Mickey McKayla, who is a University of Connecticut history professor who is also an expert on Arlington, and she says, While the family's statement that they invited and approved of the campaign photographer's presence in Section 60 may soften the remarkable cynicism and crass behavior of the Trump campaign in the eyes of some people, the law does not give them the authority to sanction campaign photography. Or put more simply, it wasn't up to them. We can accept as fact that the Gold Star families involved in this event invited Donald Trump to be there and wanted him there and approved of him bringing his campaign photographer with him and using the event as a political stunt as a part of his presidential campaign. We can accept all of that is true. It doesn't matter. It's still illegal. The family isn't allowed to do that. The family isn't allowed to say, we waive this law. And there's a very good reason for that. Because their loved ones are not the only ones buried at Arlington National Cemetery. They're not the only ones buried in Section 60, which is reserved for recent American war dead. Members of the military who were killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. From the New York Times on August 28th, an article written by Chris Cameron, Maggie Haberman, and Eric Schmidt. Headline, Trump videos at Arlington stir more fallout after graveside visit. Quote, The family of a Green Beret who died by suicide after serving eight combat tours and is buried at Arlington National Cemetery expressed concern on Wednesday that Donald J. Trump's campaign had filmed his gravesite without permission as Mr. Trump stood in an area where campaign photography isn't allowed. Relatives of Master Sergeant Andrew Marcasano issued their statement two days after Mr. Trump's visit, which also included a confrontation between members of the Trump campaign and an Arlington employee. Sergeant Marcasano died on July 7, 2020, after moving to Washington to begin a job at the Pentagon. He had three children, and friends said he had chronic post-traumatic stress disorder from his time in combat. He earned silver and bronze stars during his service. His gravesite is adjacent to that of Staff Sergeant Darren Taylor Hoover, a Marine who was killed in the 2021 bombing at Abbey Gate outside the Kabul airport in Afghanistan. The Hoover family granted permission to the Trump team to film and take photographs at the gravesite. The Marcasano family did not and filming and photographing at the gravesite for political purposes is a violation of federal law, according to cemetery officials. Yet, Sergeant Marcasano's grave was shown in photos from the visit that were published online. In a statement from Sergeant Marcasano's relatives after being contacted by the New York Times, his sister, Michelle, said, quote, We fully support Staff Sergeant Darren Hoover's family and the other families in their quest for answers and accountability regarding the Afghanistan withdrawal and the tragedy at Abbey Gate. However, 
According to our conversation with Arlington National Cemetery, the Trump campaign staffers did not adhere to the rules that were set in place for this visit to Staff Sergeant Hoover's gravesite in Section 60, which lays directly next to my brother's grave. We hope that those visiting this sacred site understand that these were real people who sacrificed for our freedom and that they are honored and respected accordingly. Unfortunately for the family of Master Sergeant Andrew Marcasano and any other Gold Star families who feel the same way about this, respecting and honoring the sacrifices of those people buried at Arlington National Cemetery is not something we should expect from Donald Trump or the people who work for Donald Trump or the people who are working to elect Donald Trump president once again. Donald Trump doesn't respect sacrifice. Donald Trump doesn't respect selflessness. Donald Trump doesn't respect the rules. And then he doesn't respect the rule of law, as we have all seen, especially over the last couple of years, when he has been indicted on dozens of counts of breaking the law, and he has been convicted on dozens of counts of breaking the law. He doesn't respect the law. But the nice thing about that is, it doesn't matter whether you respect the law or not. It doesn't matter whether you recognize the law or not. If you break it, and I should think especially if you break it with the impunity and the flagrance of Donald Trump, whether you respect it or not is irrelevant. You can still be held accountable for violating it. And wouldn't it be nice if in addition to all the other crimes that Donald Trump has committed for which he is being prosecuted and will hopefully one day be held accountable, if we could add to that list his violation of federal law for this disgusting stunt at Arlington Cemetery. I can't think of a better way for Donald Trump to be involved in honoring the memory of those men and women buried at Arlington who he so callously exploited and disrespected than to hold him accountable for that.